You know, over the 42 years that I've been answering questions on the radio, I've probably answered more questions about aspartame than about any other single substance. Aspartame, of course, is the artificial sweetener that was first introduced back in 1981. And uh, ever since then, it has been mired in controversy. There were allegations that it causes cancer, that it causes multiple sclerosis, leads to, to vision problems. I mean, virtually every ailment has been at one time blamed on uh, aspartame. Uh, now, I've never been uh, a big supporter of aspartame, although I've never seen any compelling evidence for any of the accusations that I, I just mentioned. But uh, neither have I seen any compelling evidence that it is useful in terms of uh, cutting down on the epidemic of obesity. It just seems that people who use artificial sweeteners compensate for them by eating foods that they otherwise uh, might not be uh, eating. But in any case, as you know, uh, science marches on, usually with very, very small steps. And as new information comes to light, uh, we may look on uh, issues in somewhat of a different uh, manner. And uh, I just mentioned this because of a study that uh, was just released by a group at uh, Florida State University. And they found a link between aspartame consumption and anxiety. Well, as one might imagine, uh, this uh, was a hornet's nest. Uh, why? Because uh, so many people, of course, consume artificial sweetener. It's found in about 5,000 different uh, products. Uh, the, uh, the study, of course, as expected, generated headline news. But, there's a but, isn't there always? It was a study that was done in mice. And they were given the equivalent of six to eight uh, cans of uh, diet drink every day in their drinking water. Not the diet drink itself, but just the amount of artificial sweetener that, that is in there. And then they were asked to run a maze. And it turns out that uh, they expressed more anxiety when they were running the maze when they, were, uh, when they had been given the aspartame. Now, I'm not exactly sure how one determines anxiety in mice who are running a maze, but one suspects that these researchers are experts in knowing how to do that. But, uh, you know, this is a pretty high dose of uh, aspartame, six to eight uh, cans a day. Uh, but there are people, of course, who do that. Uh, there are consumers like that. Uh, Donald Trump, of course, being a classic example of someone who guzzles uh, uh, you know, up to eight cans a day. So it is a study, of course, that's worth looking into. It is also interesting that the so-called anxiety in the mice was alleviated when they were given um, uh, Valium. Uh, but perhaps the, the most interesting and noteworthy aspect of the study was that the, the trait of anxiety uh, as generated by the aspartame was passed on to other generations. So the offspring of the mice who were not fed the aspartame also showed the anxiety. So, how anxious should we be about this study? Uh, I don't think it is all that frightening, uh, first of all, because it was done in mice, and uh, they were given very large doses in their drinking water, and it's not clear how their anxiety relates to uh, human uh, anxiety. Uh, but uh, it just adds to the body of evidence that uh, kind of uh, shows us that maybe artificial sweeteners and aspartame are not quite as benign as they were first made out to be. Uh, there was a study that showed that artificial sweeteners can, can disturb our microbiota. There was a large study in France that linked artificial sweeteners to cardiovascular disease. So we are cognizant of these things. But my take really hasn't changed on all of this. What I say is, when you're thirsty, drink water. Leave the artificially sweetened beverages to the mice. And that for today is our Cup of Joe.